Jeff from Two Hacks Garage. Well, back up at Kyle's Hack Shack and we're back on Project Days and Confused. If you saw in the previous video with this car, we started installing the Holley Sniper 2 EFI kit. That's the new kit that Holley just came out with late last year. This is the first one that we're installing of the new kit. We've done quite a few of the old ones. So far, we really like what we see. And you know what, guys? We're gonna move on to the next step. Previous videos, what we ended up doing was we took care of the fuel system, which was running new fuel line, putting the throttle body on, getting that all buttoned up. This video here, guys, what we're gonna do is a lot of the little things to help prepare for the wiring. We might get into some wiring, just not quite sure yet. But there is a, little, a lot of little things that you have to do with this, like a coolant temp sensor, oxygen sensor. You need to find a good place to mount your coil. Um, we did get the Holly Hyper Spark Ignition box, so we gotta put that up there and find a good spot for that. So yeah, it's just going to be a lot of little things to help us get to where we want to be as far as doing all the wiring correctly and getting this thing running. Um, the reason why you want to choose a specific spot for it is because you do have wiring and you do want to make it look clean. If you can see in the back here, the firewall's got a whole, whole lot of space. That new HyperSpark box, it's only about this big compared to the other one that used to be quite a bit bigger. Same thing with the coil. It's small and it's compact. So our plan tonight, it's all the little things that you need to do when you're installing the complete fuel injection kit with this. Mind you, we dig everything from holly.com. They have everything you need to do from a basic setup to the more advanced setup that what we're doing. But I'm rambling, Kenny's here, Kyle's here. We need to get to work. So I tell you what guys, we're gonna get hacking on this because you know what? Can't do anything productive if you ain't doing anything, period. See you in a few. All right, so what we did in that last video there, um, we actually did the coolant temp sensor. Um, if you notice, we did keep the stock one, so he has the mechanical gauge and the dash, and he'll have the digital gauge with the uh, sniper uh, LCD display. So he'll have both. Um, it's kind of a neat little feature with that. But the uh, next step of this is oxygen sensor installation. If you take a look there, it is critical, it says, to have at least 18 inches of exhaust pipe after the sensor. Um, it does come with a clamp on bung, but what we're going to do next is we're going to raise it up, we're going to do some measuring, see where we want to put it, but if we have to add a bung, we're not going to clamp it, we'll weld it. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to go take a look at that. See you in a few. All right, so if you see here, these headers actually have like where the EVAC system would go on a drag car. It's been plugged off. That's probably the right size bung, but if you look at the instructions, it does say one to 10 inches after the collector. And you need 18 inches of pipe after that. Obviously, we do have these header dumps that we put in here, so we need to factor that in, because if you have those open and not enough pipe, it could actually make the reading wrong on the O2 sensor and it's not gonna wanna run right. So we're gonna do some measuring. Um, it says one to 10 inches after the collector, so we'll put it somewhere where it's gonna give us the 18 inches that way, but still be one to 10 inches after that way. So we're gonna take that, the actual uh, sensor bung, and instead of clamping it on here, we're actually gonna weld it into place. With that, guys, we'll see you in a few.
All right, so what we got going on here, um, if it looked like a lot of hole doing nothing, uh, it kind of was, because one thing you do need to factor in is where are you going to put your ignition box, where you're going to put your coil, and where you're going to put your power distribution module. You want clean wiring, you want it to look clean, and you also want to have the proper amount of wire to your accessories that you need. Uh, so what we did is try to different spots, laid out some wire, and decided to put them right back in there. Um, so what we're doing now is we're going to pre-wire stuff up with this and get it all wired up. We're going to make sure it works. Obviously, it's not going to happen in this video because uh, there is quite a bit of wiring. Um, but what you kind of see here is nice is this power distribution module that Holly makes. If you look here, which is that right there, um, it's got a really cool, nice pinout with it and it's labeled. So all the wires that come off of this, it tells you where it needs to go. Um, so we're, and it's got a nice big exploded diagram, which really does help. Um, while it does look like quite a bit of wiring, it's really not that bad. It's pretty straightforward. Um, as you saw earlier, we sat there and we took our time and um, kind of just laid out what we wanted to do. Figured out a plan of where we want to put all our accessories with our ignition box, our PDM, and our coil. So now what we're going to start doing is actually we're going to start wiring stuff up. We're going to eliminate some of the smaller items power grounds and stuff like that and just keep on going. Um, it is a timely process, but it's really not that bad. Once you figure out where you want to put your boxes, you just go for it. Um, so yeah, we're just following along with instructions and we're going to get to doing some wiring. See you soon. So here's what we got talking about guys. So if you look here with the PDM, um, you got the two lugs there and that's your main power. That's gonna come directly from the battery. Um, looks like a lot of wires. When you look at the diagram here, you know, it's actually not that bad. It tells you where everything goes. And so what you do is you just run all your wires to this block, you can hook up all your other connections. You got your ignition box, which is a lot smaller than the original. You got your coil. Um, so this is gonna be a clean setup. Like I said, it looks like a mess now. See all this wiring? Well, we'll cut it to length. We'll get it all loomed up. We'll get it all hidden. It'll look really nice. But yeah, really digging that new PDM. So if you guys ever get one of these, I would highly recommend getting that PDM. Um, it really does make wiring a whole lot easier, a whole lot cleaner. And it's got troubleshooting lights on it, which are right there. So when you have something wrong, it's gonna tell you where. That's a massive, awesome improvement Holly did. And we can't wait to get this one done. Well, we're going to call that a wrap for the night. Actually got a lot further than where we wanted to. Our goal was to get that O2 bung in there and also mount our uh, PDM, which are a power distribution module, which makes things with wiring super, super nice. Um, it comes with a great diagram, instructions, and all that to make everything straightforward. And our goal was to get the coil mounted and to get our um, ignition box mounted. Well, it doesn't sound like a lot, Guys, when you start laying out wiring and you want it to look clean, you want to make sure you have proper runs. Uh, brainstorming for a while to get all that laid out is actually pretty crucial. Um, so what do we do from there, guys? Well, we started hooking up some wires, getting stuff ran, getting stuff hooked up. Um, one thing we do need to do as we were hooking up that O2 bung, we noticed that a collector on it was kind of rotted out. When I say rotted out, well, it was thin. It had been welded on a lot and was burning through. Uh, luckily, Holly does supply those, so I'll be going on ordering some of those tomorrow to take care of that. That's got to properly seal for that O2 sensor to work properly. So yeah, if it looks like a mess, well, it is a mess, because what we like to do is we hook up all the wiring, make sure everything works correctly, and then we're going to go back in, cut to length, hide everything to make sure it looks really good. Just a little bit of a tip. If you go in there, wire everything up, get everything bundled up just like you want it, and something doesn't work, well, you're going to be cutting looms. And you know what, you can always take wire off, but it's a lot harder to add wire. So we're doing this the right way. It takes a little bit more time. It doesn't look clean right now, but the finished product, it's gonna look real clean. It's gonna be nice and it's gonna be super functional. So with that guys, in the next episode, we're gonna take a little bit deeper of a dive into the wiring on this. 
We're gonna try to get most of that wrapped up. We still got the distributor put in, new wires, plugs, all that fun jazz. Get it fired up, check for leaks, put the tune on it, and this thing will be ready to cruise. Unfortunately, it's middle of winter in Illinois, so it might be a little bit longer to actually cruise it than we'd like to, but we wanna make sure it's fully functional. So until then guys, next episode was gonna be more wiring because that's a whole lot of fun. So we'll catch you in the next one. See ya.